In this series of videos, we've been working through budgets. This will be the last video in this part of the series anyway, and it's on a cash budget, perhaps the most important budget of them all. So, so far we've learned about cash collections, we've learned about tracking when we're paying back our cash. Well, at the end of the day, we want to know if we're going to run out of money. So if our cash collect coming in is less than our cash going out, we may have a real problem. And that's, that's one of the main purposes of budgeting is just to make sure you don't run into these real problems, right? You're planning and uh, part of your planning is to make sure you don't run out of money. So the schedule expected cash collections, or rather our cash budget, not a schedule expected cash collections, but a cash budget really breaks down whether we're going we're to run out of money or not and how to handle it if we do. So let's read through this uh, problem and this is a very basic cash budget. Joe's Jumpers produces and sells jumpsuits worn by skydivers. The company had the following estimated cash flows for 2012 uh, and you can see quarter one, two, three, four. Most of our other budgets so far have been monthly budgets. This one is a yearly budget. We do it by quarter. Uh, and there's the cash coming in and cash coming out. And I can already see quarter one, like our cash coming in is 300. Our cash going out is 400. We're likely going to be short of money unless we have a bunch in the bank. Uh, the company begins the year with 20 grand. Okay, so I can already see a problem, and I hope you see it too. Like we got 20 grand in the bank, we got 300 coming in in the first quarter, 400 going out. We're going to be short. Well, anyway, let's read on. Company begins the year with 20 grand in cash and requires a minimum cash balance of $10,000. So it needs 10,000 in the bank just to feel comfortable. The company may borrow any amount from a local bank at an annual interest rate of 3%. The borrowing must occur at the beginning of any quarter and all repayments must be made at the end of any quarter. Interest must be repaid at the time of the loan repayment. Okay, so we're going to do a cash budget uh, and let's start with the name of our company, Joe's Jumpers. We are preparing a cash budget, and it's for the year, not for the quarter, but for the year ended, and I'll assume December 31st, 2013. All right, so again, we've got four quarters to worry about here, and a year. And I think a good place to start is just with our beginning cash balance. And our beginning cash balance in quarter one was $20,000. We're going to add to it any cash collections and in uh, the year we collected $300,000 in, in cash receipts. Uh, you'll notice something. I, I probably should have said cash receipts to be consistent with the problem. When I give this in my class, I don't really, I'm not concerned if they say cash collections, cash receipts, whatever. I mean, as long as they're getting the right data down, I, I'm generally pretty happy here. So 300 plus 20 is 320. And this is our total amount of our cash available. So we could spend up to a maximum of $320,000 without running out of money. Unfortunately, our disbursements are four hundred. dollars So 320 minus 400 tells me that I am going to have an $80,000 cash uh, surplus. Well, it's not a surplus. It's a cash shortfall right we are short on cash by eighty thousand dollars so that's the top half of this chart just to say okay here's what i started with here's what cash i took in here's what i paid out and here's what i'm sitting with the second half of this chart is going to be for financing so where's the money coming from well what should i do now i'm eighty thousand dollars short i'm gonna have to borrow some money and they talked about borrowing money from the bank. It said the company may borrow any amount from the local bank at an interest rate of 3%. The other thing that's relevant here is we require a minimum cash balance of $10,000. So if I require a minimum balance of $10,000, that means that I've got to borrow. Well, I'm sitting at negative 80. I've got to get back up to positive 10. I better borrow ninety thousand dollars I'm going to leave a couple lines here one for repaying and one for repayments of interest which I'll separate separate out here 
So anyway, our total financing is a positive $90,000 to my cash flow. Yes, I'm borrowing money. You might think that is a bad thing. Well, it's helping my cash. So negative 80 plus 90 leaves me with $10,000 in my ending cash balance. Beautiful. Quarter one in the bag. Let's just review. We started the quarter with 20 grand. We collected 300 saying, okay, we have 320 to use. We paid out 400. So we only have $80,000 left. Uh, we're Sorry, we had 320 to use. We paid out 400, meaning that we're 80,000 in the hole. We have to be 10,000 out of the hole. That's our minimum cash balance. So we borrow 90,000 to get out of the hole by 10,000. We're, we're $10,000 positive cash balance. Our beginning cash balance in quarter two, well that's the same as our ending for quarter one, it's 10,000 bucks. In quarter two, we collect $500,000 in cash, meaning we have 510 available to us. We pay out 300,000 in cash disbursements leaving us with a surplus amount of cash of 210. Now if I had 210 to the good and I owed 90, you know, I may pay back right away and that's what I would say we should do here. Let's pay back that money. Do we have enough to pay back the 90? Absolutely. So let's pay back the 90,000. But we also have to pay back interest. Now let's figure out how much interest we have to reimburse these guys. So we borrowed $90,000. And when did we borrow $90,000? Well, it says the company may borrow any amount from a local bank at an annual interest rate of 3%. The borrowing must occur at the beginning of any quarter. So if I borrowed in quarter one, and I borrowed at the beginning, I borrowed $90,000 at the beginning of quarter one. I borrowed it on January 1st. Now, when did I repay that $90,000? Let's see, it says uh, at the beginning of any quarter, all repayments must be made at the end of any quarter. So I repay my money not in quarter one, I repay in quarter two, and let's assume we repay at the end of quarter two. So I repay on June 30th. So I borrow 90,000 on January 1st, I pay back 90,000 on June 30th. Let's try to figure out the interest. 90,000 times 3% is $2,700. And that's my interest for the year. The annual interest rate is $2,700. I didn't borrow the money for a year. I borrowed it from January to June. I borrowed it for six out of the 12 months in the year. I borrowed it for half a year. I only should pay $1,350 in interest. And in fact, that's going to be my interest bill. Now, some of you real sharp intro to financial accounting students will look at this and say, wait a minute, our interest expense accrues over time. Why aren't I doing half in January, half in February? This is a cash budget. So it's all about when we pay back the cash. And we pay back the cash on $13.50. So your accrual accounting is great, and it's important to know that there is an interest expense in January and one in February, but uh, this $13.50 of interest all gets paid back in June, and that's the amount. So, bracket 91,350 is our total financing. We're paying 91,350 back to the bank to pay back the 90,000 we owed them and the 1350 we owed them in interest. 210 minus 91,350 is 118,650. And we're ready to continue. Back to the top, what did I start with? Well, I started, I ended quarter two with 118,650. I'm going to start quarter three with 118,650. What happened in quarter three? I took in 250, I paid out 300. So I'll add 250 to that number, and I get 368,650. Uh, that's the total amount available. I pay out 300 leaving me with 68650 for myself. Now this is a surplus, 
I haven't dipped below that magic number of 10, my minimum cash balance. I'm not going to borrow. I'm not going to repay. I'm not going to do any financing. My ending cash balance is 68,650. Last one. I start the quarter with 68,650. I have $350,000 in cash receipts. Bring me up to 418,650. I pay out $400,000 in cash disbursements, leaving me with $18,650 of a cash surplus. I didn't borrow any. I don't need to repay anything. I don't have any interest because, again, I'm above that magical figure of $10,000. I'm just left with $18,650 in cash at the end of quarter four. Now on to the final column, and this is my for the year column. My Not my totals column, but my for, for the year column. So what was my beginning cash balance for the year? Well, the beginning of the year was January, so the beginning of quarter one, I had $20,000. That's what I'd begun the year with. Began the year with? Begun? I'm not sure. Uh, on to cash collections. Well, how much cash did I collect for the year? 300 800 1050 Looks like $1.4 million in cash collected. Now $20,000 plus $1.4 million is $1.42. I'm going to deduct my cash disbursements, which were $400, $300, $300, $400, dollars $1.4 million, leaving me with $20,000 cash surplus. Now, continuing down to the financing. During the year, I borrowed $90,000. I paid back 90. I also paid back 1350 in interest. So my overall financing, 90 in, 90 out, and 1350 out means I'm just out 1350, right? If you add that all up, it means our financing cost us 1350 overall. 20,000 minus 1350 equals 18650, and you can see these two numbers match. That means our cash uh, budget worked. Uh, we ended the year with $18,650 in cash. Oops, I should scroll up because I just realized the picture of my head is going to be blocking about the last five things that I wrote. So anyway, you can see the 18650s match there at the bottom of the page. All right, that's it for this group of videos. Stay tuned for the next batch. Thanks a lot.